You've all, you're always doing something, man. What do you got coming up? Well, uh, still slinging appliances around. Uh, but this weekend we're having a uh, we sell the Gosney pizza ovens now at the store. Pizza demo. A lot more fun than vaccines and voting and all that <laughs> stuff. Better we talking too, about yeah. earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell uh, me about this pizza oven. Pizza oven. Gosney. Uh, great little pizza company we brought in about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, they're out of the UK. Uh, we can knock out pizza in about 90 seconds. A lot of fun. Three different ovens going. They're launching. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. They're uh, launching their brand new pizza in 90 seconds. Yeah. yeah. From, from, from dough? Yeah. Yeah. Raw dough. Put Not- your stuff on it. Put it in there. Spin it. Um, 850, 900 degree oven. We did an event. How do, you, how do you get the dough to set? You get it hot. You get that stone real hot, and you're firing it up. Good undercarriage on that thing. Nice cheese on the top. Nice. 90-second pizza. 90 seconds. We'll be doing all kinds of stuff in them. We'll have three ovens going at once. Uh, they launched their new ARC oven. It's a new piece, a 699 oven, 14-inch opening. So we can not just do that. We'll throw a skillet in there. We'll sear steaks off. We'll be doing sliders, flatbreads, all kinds of stuff Wait. in it. This is a you're gonna have a demonstration. At yeah, your, eleven to three o'clock, uh, from eleven to three on Saturday at the store. This Saturday. This Saturday. Okay, two days I'm writing now. that down. Come down for lunch. <laughs> you guys about lunch earlier. That'd be the place I, to come. Okay. How, how long do you have to, to to set down a piece of pizza that's 900 degrees before you can actually eat it? Pretty quick. Put it down. It's we're using. Uh, we have a couple just add water dough kits, so you're getting them pretty thin. They're Neapolitan style. We'll knock them out in no time. We're going to do a couple of Chicago's as well. Yeah. Um, pretty fast. We did a demo last year at the Bavarian for the uh, Taste the Blue Ridge. And in that two hours, I think we made about 50 pizzas and we were under no rush. How big we are these? Showing, are these like little personal 12, 12 pizzas? 12 to 14 inch pies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Round or, or rectangle? Round. Yeah. Well, whatever shape you want. I don't care. The what first kind? one I, th- I usually screw up and it's oval shape, but after you get that stone right, they're good. How much does something like that cost? Um, they start at five ninety nine. The ones we'll be throwing on this weekend will be six ninety nine. Then their big boy is nineteen ninety nine. I'll have it running, and that one will be running off of wood. All the other ones will be running off of propane. It, it, these are outdoor yeah. units. The little one, the rock box, has fold down legs. We take it to Morgantown or Shepherd Tail, getting all the time with us. That's so, like, I mean, that's the same price as like a Traeger grill, or or better. Yeah, it, they it, they we use them one in one. I'll have the steak rolling on the Traeger, nice and slow and smoking, and have the dome going at thousand degrees and throw that steak right on the skillet inside there and just reverse sear it off in a matter of 60 90 seconds aside i'm so hungry right now I know, <laughs> right? This is a, like, we can do a remote saturday if you don't want come out we'll come on cook them there hey uh the tragedy in baltimore and in, in the baltimore harbor which so much flows through the baltimore harbor uh, are you getting any word about supply chain disruption because there's a lot of cargo that goes through that area? I'm not sure how much of it is appliance related. I know there's a lot of autos that go through there. Yeah, no. Um, most of the brands, the Whirlpool and GE, most of the brands we sell, Whirlpool's pretty much made in America. GE, a lot of their products made in uh, Louisville. So I have a uh, my RDC, my local distribution center for uh, GE, is in Baltimore, but it's not affecting us. We've, I think we had about 300 appliances come in this week, so we're still getting stuff. Um, most of our stuff comes in from the West Coast and works its way over. But with those two brands being predominantly made in America brands, a lot of it's sourced from, um, you know, within the country. Is everything back to normal otherwise in terms of inventory? Uh, kind of. There's still some challenges. Uh, it's mainly on the supply end of parts. Uh, there's still some challenges. But for the most part, we're back to moving. Um, and the things that have – it's I think it was a good purge for the industry. They found where there was – uh, issues and then opportunities. So they got rid of a lot of things. There was some brands that would have seven different 18 cubic foot refrigerators. And why? We jumped that down to three. So their uh, economies of scale and their efficiencies have gotten better because of that. But, you know, it's and all the bad. There was some good that come out of it. But if things are getting pretty well, we're we're pretty stocked. We can I mean, like I, like I said, we had about 300 appliances come in this week. So uh, the boys are busy. They're still able to get stuff out same day, next day. We've got five delivery teams on the road. So they're they're, they're moving a lot of metal. Have you been able to hire enough people to satisfy what, where you'd like to be staff-wise? We have. Um, we are picky. We hire for attitude over aptitude. I mean, we can teach anyone to do what we do, and uh, but I can't teach them how to be a good person to that person sitting in the truck beside them for the next eight hours or up there. So we really hire for that. We've got some really young guys that have been really good. Um, they, I think you're seeing the whole skill set of hopefully, you know, using your hands and stuff coming back more than just everyone going to college for maybe a degree that won't bring you much. I mean, my guys all do really well. They take very good care of us and 
you know, they take very good care of the customers, and that's what we care about. But we're we've got a really good crew. I think we're up to twenty six or twenty seven people now. That's great. It's yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, but uh, it it's good. Great group of people. They we I'm with them more than I'm with anyone else. So, how has the inflation of the last three years affected your pricing and uh, your affordability of employees? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely raised the cost up, but. There's two sides of this. It, there is inflation, of course, but you've got everything coming from the Northern Virginia, the Fredericks, Leesburg, everything coming our way. Was it truly inflation on our side? Or are we under the market to begin with for so long that people are finally creeping in? So no one made minimum wage with us. I can't ask someone to take a 200-pound refrigerator to the third level of a townhome for $10 an hour. So our guys, uh, we're, we try to be very competitive. We do all the benefits that we can with them. And there's a lot of things we do. It's our people over some profits. I mean, we, we're not open on Sundays. We don't stay open late. You know, we try to make sure everyone has a home life, and there's a lot to that. There's great factory employers around here, but my guys, they want to be able to know they're going home at 5 o'clock at night. If we run late at 6, they can have their weekends off, and that means as much to us as anything. Yeah, some of those factories do shift work. Yep. Which Great companies. Tough stuff, man. Our people, we want them home in the evenings. We want them home on the weekends. Mr. Gilstrap. So there's with all the building that's happening around here, residential boom, mm-hmm. is that affecting you? Are you becoming part of their uh, different builders' regular selection set of of appliances and, and such? Absolutely. We we got into the builder game back in the early 2000s when the first uh, boom hit, and then over the years as we've scaled went and gone from a, you know, when I got in the business there was grandmother, grandfather, uncle, cousin, dad, you know, but two employees. So we went from for uh, let's say effectively five of us to where we're at now so we do a lot of builders we have a couple of national accounts with very big builders in the area i have a truck on three townhomes in laray today so we're we're all over the place we're pennsylvania maryland west virginia um, we do cover one of the largest builders in the nation in this region and then we just picked up another large regional and then there's some great local builders that we love dealing with we take care of them I hate to say better than our nationals, but those guys are with us before the nationals came on board, and we make sure that they get precedence, and you know they've been with us for a long time. So when you go to the design center at Builder X, and what they are actually seeing is your stuff that's set up in in, in the various grades. Yeah, you're not seeing a lot of model homes anymore. I mean, oh, really? It, nah, they're, they're, they can't build them fast enough. So to build something and set it as a model, you know, you know, some of the big builders like we do a lot of Dr. Horton work. They're a different animal. They'll do 7,800 homes in the subdivision. So they'll have a model, but not many of your local guys around here will do a model. They build them out, spec them out. They send me a, a selection sheet, and we send them out what they what they ask for. We kind of have them in a nice routine to where they know what to expect. And if a customer wants an upgrade, they can come in and see us, and we work around with that. Mr. Harvey, what are some of the other hot items that are really popular now? Right. Well, you're getting into spring, so the Traeger grills are flying, the Gosney pizza ovens. Uh, Big Green Egg, we brought them in late last year. We're going to have, we have Gosney this weekend. I have Traeger in May. We have Big Green Egg in June. But as far as in the house goes, connected appliances. Well, let's go back to these grills because yep. I'm not a grill guy. We can what? fix that. <laughs> well, you you can sell me a grill. I won't use it. <laughs> I'm terrible. When you, when you slay the trout, that's how you cook them. That's your sushi. <laughs> trout assassin. Yep. How? What's the difference between like a Green Egg, a Traeger, and... Do you have the, like your flat irons or? Sure, Traeger has a flat rock, which is your griddle. So okay. um, that's a propane flat uh, cast iron surface you cook on. You can do any you know vegetables, rice, breakfast stuff. We've done everything on that. Traeger is a wood fired oven, so you put your pellets in. The there's an electric hot rod that heats it. Fan keeps it going. You're cooking with wood. There's very user friendly from what simple. I hear. Simple. Set it and forget it. If you can turn on an oven, you can turn those on. And, and you don't have to stay with the the. You don't have to be there to tend to the. No, connect it to your Wi-Fi. Put the app on your phone. You can monitor everything from your app. Well, how's that different than a big green egg? Big green egg's a Kamado cooker. So it, the what's way, that mean? Well, it's a it cooks in the shape of an egg. You're using a lump charcoal. So your fuel source would be lump charcoal or hardwood if you want to use hardwood. And you can put wood in there for smoking, but you close a lid on it and it cooks like an oven would. It's a chimney style and you use air to control your temperature. I I have a green egg mm-hmm. and the low and slow, it, it, it cooks wonderfully. It's so hard not to peak. Mm-hmm. You really have to trust it. And there's no window. So you, you put in a, a brisket or something and you got to trust it to just sit there for six or seven hours. You got to trust the temperature gauge and then it's a surprise you open it It always turns out to be delicious 
but it's really it's hard to do when you're a control freak. There are two so, different I mean, types of cookers. I mean, I don't have time for a big green egg. I'm home, you know, seven o'clock at night. We need to fire something up and get it going quick. So where the big green egg is that great, you know, start in the afternoon or Saturday, Sunday egg for my lifestyle. Anyway, you start the fire, you get it going, you go low and slow. With a Traeger, I can shove that brisket on there, pop the meter probe into it, turn it on and walk away, and I can watch it from my phone and not have to wait for the thing to heat up. And, you know, we can leave the house. You can turn it up, turn it down. Now, Big Green Egg came out with a uh, Wi-Fi thing for the airflow that can do the same thing uh, to an extent. But it's still a manual setting. Uh, right? The first or one is, but this one will open and close the air shutter for oh, really? you automatically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your solo stoves, still carrying those? No, I got rid of the solo stove. We found a, a company, it's called Brio. They're actually made in York, PA. American made, um, right up the road. It's the same type of product, except the Brio offers sear plates, cooking racks, mm. um, different ways of cooking on it. And we really, we're big on the made in America as much as we can be. So I wanted the uh, that Brio being so close. The rep can come down whenever I need him. I want to do something with them maybe in April. We're working on that though. It, are those pellet? No, those would be wood, just, just like wood. Uh, yeah, just like uh, the. Well, you can you can they now have pellet adapters and, and the smaller ones you can use pellets. Yeah, no, this would be a lump. This would be chunks of wood. How is a pizza oven different than any other indirect heat oven? So your pizza oven's going to have a pizza stone on the bottom that's a few like three or four cm's, and to get a good pizza you have a hot stone, right? So it's all about the surface of it. I can cook a pizza on the big green egg. I can cook a pizza on the Traeger. Um, but you're going to bake it like you would an oven. You're going to take 15, 20 minutes to get a pizza done on the Traeger. Nothing wrong with that. But with these ovens, we can take a fresh dough. We'll probably have 30, 40 doughs ready to roll for this event Saturday. But we'll spin them around, get them out, zap them in there. Um, you just turn it a couple times until you get it done as you want, pull it out and knock it out. But you can do, I have a flat skillet that we'll throw in there. It's a lodge cast iron thing. We'll throw that in there and we'll I'll sear meat right on that thing and cook other stuff in there. But it's just... Uh, mm -hmm. Pizza ovens have kind of really been where a lot of things are going. You know, you can have people over for a weekend, get yourself 10 doughs, and you can knock them out. We were at my buddy's house last Thursday watching the first round of the tournament, and within the game break, in that 15 minutes, we threw six pizzas on the thing and were, didn't miss a, a beat. You know, one after another, cut them, throw them back out, and off you go. You could p pick a tomato and then have it on a pizza. And Rob, is your inner Italian offended by these high-tech pizzas? No, not in the least. No, okay. Yeah, the faster I can get a pizza, the better. Right. There's you nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you can have more. Yeah, more, more pizza from That's me. That's it. <laughs> uh, PJ Orsini, our guest here on the program. Are you guys going to be at a home show? No. All right, just want to check on that. No, but I just we don't have the manpower or the time. And then the other little trick for me is uh, I a lot of those things are gravel and hard concrete, and to yeah. set a $10,000 stove on gravel is very risky. So Hey, uh, how many years has it been since you took over for your dad? I bought the business in 2016. I've been in the business for 22 years now. What's the difference between the way you run a business like this in 2024 versus the way your dad ran it in 1990? Um, we're a lot more regimented. Um, things are a lot more structured. You know, my dad, my uncle, they were, my dad's one of the hardest working humans you'll ever meet, but the business side of thing was what he let my grandparents do. And there's a whole different side of things where, you know, it's, if we bought it for a hundred and sold it for two hundred, they thought they made a hundred, but it cost you fifty five to make that hundred, so you made forty five. Mm -hmm. So just the whole thing, you know, being able to scale, we we price match the box stores. We do everything the box stores do. They're not cheaper than me. We have right now probably five hundred appliances on hand. It sounds like a lot, but they'll be going quickly. So if someone wants something today, we can get it out there. Um, you know, back in the day, the focus used to be on you, your salespeople. Your salespeople are the most important part of the business. Well, to me, it's my installers. They're the last touch point in the house. You know, they're the ones that are going to put it in, make sure we don't damage a wall, damage a floor, you know, clean up their mess and get out. So it's the evolution of the business. You know, back then there was my grandmother could keep one of every part in to fix something. Now we were looking for a water valve this morning and there's no consistency from model to model. Everything's model specific. And it's a lot different. There's no repair manuals. There's service flashes. You have to call tech line. It's it's very different than what it was. Um, but the basics we do are there. We typically try to do the, the best and the right thing that we can. You know, the box stores have made things very competitive, which is mm -hmm. with any world, no different than a gas station and the price of gas. 
but we're penny for penny with them every day. Um, we use digital price tags in the shop and every 12 minutes they check the box stores to make sure we're within one dollar of them. So unless you're buying scratch and dent, which is the world I don't play in, um, we're penny to penny with everybody. Is there anything the state legislature can do to make the business environment friendlier for small businessmen like yourself? Everybody wants you to cut taxes. Um, you know, get rid of the inventory tax would be phenomenal. Um, but no, I we're very our, our industry has to be very reactive to what the box stores do. We know that fifty two percent of every appliance is sold are coming from a box store. So that's just the name of the game. You know, we have a lot of people that we've been around seventy six years have no clue who we are. I had a DoorDash guy bring lunch to someone yesterday at the store and spent fifteen minutes looking at our barbecue stuff and had never been in. So it's just a matter of, you know, letting everyone see we we're not that old store that was on Winchester Avenue. We're doing I have two cabinet designers. We're doing full kitchens, cabinets, flooring, tile options. Um, you know, we we have a full home store there with all the opportunities that we can do. And, and the kitchen design staff? Yeah, I have two kitchen designers, Annette and Heather. Uh and that's been doing it for over thirty years. Heather's probably ten plus. Um, and they're they're running constantly. They're going to homes, measuring, meet with our template people. They they stay very busy. We're just about out of time. Tell us about Saturday morning quickly. Saturday at the shop, uh, eleven to three o'clock. Come on in. I'll try to live stream some of it on our socials if you can. But pizza's rolling all day. Um, should be a good day. Should be a nice day from what it's looking like so far. And the address? Uh, three sixty Hack Wilson Way, right off Route Nine. Good to see you again, PJ. Thanks for having me in. Now, I'll be down in Italian. We had Petrucci out, Orsini in, but I'm out now. I, I, it's, it's just me. Uh, however, I could change your guys' last names if you want. I'll give you a vowel. Harvey, it's close. It's close. Harvey's kind sometimes, of, sometimes it's a vowel. Sometimes why? So sometimes I'll, Not this time. I'll be in Italian.